This film documents a year in the lives of the mute spawns we have around here. For the past three years now, we have followed two swan pairs and watched as they have tried to establish territories, build nests and bring up young. We followed them from the depths of a British winter through a cool spring to a record hot summer and eventually to an extremely cold winter. Will they be able to raise more than the two signets from last year and make it through to the end of the year unscathed? It's been an amazing privilege to document their behaviour throughout the year. This is our Mute Swan Diary. So this is Frank, and this is Claude. Frank controls most of the Grebe Lake Reserve, and Claude controls all of the gravel pits. Claude and his partner Maud had three signets in 2021, but one was predated towards the end of the season. And on the 24th of January, this was the last time we saw the two signets before they were driven off by their parents. Once the signets had left, Claude and Maud vacated the main gravel pits lake and then it was invaded by three new pairs, Max and Edith, Gus and Florence, and Harry and Sally. Max was the dominant swan, kept the main part of the lake and drove everybody else down to the bottom end. Eventually, Max forced everyone off of the lake. Harry and Sally flew down to a little mere at the far end of the reserve. Morning guys. It's, uh, I think, the 29th of March. I don't know if you can see behind me, but exciting news. A swan pair, Claude and Maud. Maud is on the nest. I don't know if you can see. In the background, a couple of photographs I put up. But this is really early, actually. We, uh, we noticed um, her on the nest last year at the end of April. So three weeks, maybe four weeks earlier than last year. And that's really fantastic. I just uh, have just been looking forward to this, but I didn't think it would come this early. Hi, Claude. While Maud was on the nest, Claude drove off anything else that moved. Three days later, back at Grebe Lake. Okay, we've got a swan nest. So interestingly, about three or four days after we found our nest on the second reserve here, a Frank and Francine, and there's Francine on the nest on the first reserve, almost exactly the same spot where they nested last year. Great to see. Out on the main lake, we saw this pair mating. This was Snowy and his partner, Blanche. On April the 9th, Frank is collecting nesting materials with Francine still on the nest. In a surprise move, Snowy had lived up to her name and found a nest site on an island. Very precarious position. And at the gravel pits, Claude continued to keep watch over Maud. And then another surprise. Well, unless I'm very mistaken, guys, we have another swan's nest. Four weeks later than Claude and Maud have nested, there is Sally on the nest. Absolutely fantastic. And then six weeks after we'd first seen them on the nest, 
I observed Maud behaving differently. Our first signets of the year. Claude seemed unconcerned. The next day we went back to see if we could find out how many signets had hatched. Okay, we found them, we found them. Oh yeah, here they are Sue. They're here. Absolutely fantastic. How many have we got? How many we got? Can you see? One. That seems to be many. Can you see? Yeah, I can see quite a few. Can you? At least four. Oh, cool. Look on the. I'll get the cam. I'll get the zoom camera in a minute. Claude and Maud are on with their signets. How fantastic! They had hatched eight signets. The next morning we went to check on Frank and Francine. Frank nowhere to be seen but Francine had hatched six signets. And on the island Blanche had hatched four. But they were in such a precarious position, the nest was up through brambles and any predator could easily take these tiny signets. On May the 16th, three days after hatching, we saw Frank bringing his tiny family across to the main lake. We couldn't understand why he would do this. The hatching mere looked really safe, but presumably he thought his family will be safer out on the big water. Such a risky manoeuvre. You can see the two adults checking to see that there are no dangers in the hedge down to the lake. Here they go guys, what a fantastic, this is, so she's got them all on her back, but at least, actually she's got them all on her back, all six of them, that's incredible, as in Leslie's got some, has he got someone? That is amazing, be careful you guys. And then, for some unknown reason, Frank started to attack Snowy. Frank had his signets in tow, and Snowy had Blanche and the signets next to the island. It was crazy, it seemed a really crazy thing to be doing. Snowy held his nerve for a bit, but eventually was completely intimidated by Frank and disappeared around to the far side of the island. We wondered what the next day would bring. Blanche had lost three out of her four signets. We couldn't be sure it was Frank, but certainly Snowy had disappeared and Blanche and her remaining signet were at real risk. We watched Blanche and her remaining signet over the next few days, but she'd been pushed into the territory of Clarence. It seemed a very risky situation. Frank's territory grab had pushed Blanche into Clarence's territory, and by May the 27th, there was no sign of a signet. Meanwhile, Frank's grab for more territory had reduced his signets to three, and then two, and by May the 27th, 
Frank and Francine were down to their final signet from the original six. Strategy of grabbing more territory and moving the signets every day hadn't paid off. Meanwhile, I went back to the gravel pits to check up on Claude and Maud and to see how many of their eight signets they'd managed to get through to this point. OK, I'm going to take this footage back and see how many we've got. It certainly seems to be. <laughs> There's uh, Maud clearing some garbage away just to give them more to eat. Look at that. OK, I've got one, two, three, four. Is that five? No, one, two, three, six. Six out of our eight. You two are just absolute stars. Absolute stars. It is Maud. And they seem to be much more experienced than Frank and Francine over at Grebe Lake. They're moving them around as well, but they have only lost one of their signets. At the end of May, across the road on the small mere, Sally is still on her nest. We left for three weeks in Scotland, and we wondered what we would find when we returned. So hello everybody, we are back in North Bedfordshire. We just spotted these two swans, looking a bit wary, and they were going back towards the bottom end of Grebe Lake, um, looking very wary not particularly as if it's their territory and we saw two swans out here and I said to Sue we know if these two start getting aggressive that it must be Frank and Francine and there they are but what that means of course is that from having one signet left when we left for Scotland they now have no signets, which is probably what, is, what we predicted. So they've had six signets and they've all gone. Snowy and Blanche with their four signets, they've completely disappeared. I think Frank took over the territory and Snowy and Blanche have left. But here's Frank trying to drive off, even though he's lost all his signets, he's still driving off other, other pairs. And of the small mere, at the gravel pits reserve, there was movement on Sally's nest. They'd had three signets. How absolutely wonderful. Over the next four weeks, we watched as Claude and Maud's seven signets and Harry and Sally's three signets continued to grow. There was a month's difference in age between the seven signets and the three signets. You can really see the difference in size. And at the end of August... Hello guys, here we are with our uh, Claude and Maud. Look at those signets. They're all wing stretching, wing flapping. Absolutely fantastic. Seven of them still going, look. So just heard some shooting over the back and uh, disturbed a lot of... Oh, no. It's disturbed a lot of the birds. Well, the swans, you can see what they're doing. Straight away, back into their little hidey hole. Hello guys, so here are our swans. This is obviously their little hidey hole in the evenings, somewhere down here. 
they come here for safety. It was amazing to watch, they were all spread out and I was just thinking how confident the signets are looking. And all that uh, gunfire or an elaborate bird scarer went off and straight away they were next to the parents and uh, the parents are bringing them back into here. Nature is pretty amazing. So Claude and Maud as usual being the, the perfect parents. On September the 23rd, one month earlier than last year, I saw them taking their first flight. Absolute privilege. Over the next few weeks, I watched as their flying became more direct and faster. And it was always Maud that was taking practice. Claude didn't seem particularly bothered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Claude. Hello guys. So Claude has lost all pretense of making any effort to help with flying practice. He just sort of wanders after them without making any real effort. But here are the signets and Maud just waiting to start off again. One day, their peace was shattered. But peace returned eventually. These mute swans are not really mute, as you can hear from the next clip. It's now October, and I found Harry and Sally in their three signets, still on their little mirror. The weather's starting to change, but flying practice continues, even in the windy conditions. Even Claude was making an effort. On the 7th of October. Hello guys, there's something major going on here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Claude and Maud's territory has been invaded by a load of swans. So, never seen this behaviour before, guys. We've got five adults and I think it's three signets maybe two and the adults are protecting the signets which is which is really weird seriously and then over here I've got Claude Maud and their seven signets 
It's just bizarre. I'm going to keep an eye on this. Okay, so I think uh, Claude's had enough of this lot and he's going to drive them off. He's, well, he's getting close in. It's amazing. Three of the adults were driven off, closely followed by all four of the signets. I wondered where they would go. And then finally, the last three adults leaving Claude and Maud and the signets alone. Hello guys, so I found our four signets that left the gravel pits reserve. They've flown about four miles. And here they are, in Frank's territory. They didn't last long at Frank's end of the lake. We called the two new adults, Bonnie and Clyde, as they were always on the run. The trouble was Frank had driven them off and now they were moving into Clarence territory. Clarence drove both adults away from the signets. But after a while, he seemed to get bored of the chase. Towards the end of October, it was more of the same with Claude and Maud. So you're uh, as enthusiastic as ever, Claude. At the end of the month, we had two signet interlopers and even Claude's signets were starting to show aggressive behaviour. There was a mink and an otter, and the two interloper signets looked at real risk. The otter got really close, but eventually Claude saw them off again. On Grebe Lake, the new male with the four signets Clyde was starting to dominate Clarence. Could this be the end of Clarence as one of our dominant males? So as December approached, we had Harry and Sally and their three signets, Bonnie and Clyde and their four, and of course Claude and Maud with their seven, or were their seven. On December the 3rd, I only saw six signets. The weather changed dramatically, and on December the 9th, we had two weeks of extremely cold temperatures. I went to check on Claude and Maud's signets. They still had all seven. Harry and Sally and their three were still around too. Grebe Lake 
was completely frozen. Although the four signets had found a small patch of water. Their parents, however, seemed to be completely frozen in. But by the 29th, the ice had gone. It's the 29th of December. Three signets. That's Harry and Sally, and three signets. Harry and Sally were on Claude and Maud's mere. And on the main lake, there was no sign of Claude, Maud, or their signets. We couldn't understand it. And as we wended our way home, we wondered whether the signets had finally flown. On New Year's Eve, at Grebe Lake, we found a lone signet. Along with six others. They'd made it. They'd finally left Claude and Maud. What a year it has been. It's been such a huge privilege to follow them this year. The circle of life will start again. Will Claude and Maud hold their territory? Or we will never see them again? We'll see. Till next year guys. <laughs>